Welcome to the presentation of our paper Sun, a simulated UAV network testbed with hardware and a loop software defined radio support. My name is Lars Baumgartner. First of all, let's talk about unmanned aerial vehicles and how they are used in disaster response today. From firefighters to other professional first responders, UAVs are pretty common now for various different tasks. In a disaster scenario, communication is key. First responders need to coordinate search and rescue missions or distribute supplies and tools or need aerial photographs to, to get an overview of the disaster area. But the people on the ground, they also need to use uh, communication to contact relatives or friends and uh, say that they are okay or that they are in need of help. When deploying UAVs for communication purposes here, we face a few uh, unique challenges. They need to be able to operate without existing infrastructure as cell towers and Wi-Fi connections might break down. So we have the, the remote operation link to the UAV itself. And then we want to provide communication services to the people on the ground. And since we will probably deploy more than one UAV, uh, they need to self-organize and we need advanced mission planning so we can optimize for multiple target objectives, such as survey an area and provide communication and get sensor readings from various different locations. The remote operation link itself, as well as the communication to other nodes in the network, must be resilient and disruption tolerant, as we expect intermittent connectivity there. And we want to have a long network lifetime. The airtime of a UAV is quite limited, so we have to optimize and cater for this, that we need to replace batteries and recharge and redeploy UAVs. Most people, when we say UAV, think of quadcopters. They're very common already. Um, many first responders already have them. They're easy to deploy. They can take off vertically and land vertically. They can hover on the same place, but they're not very fast and they cannot stay in the air for very long. And they're quite limited when it comes to carrying capacity for payload. The alternative are fixed wings. Here we have a high speed we, we can stay in the air much longer, we can glide, and we can carry much larger payloads. But on the downside, uh, we need more space for them to take off and land, and they cannot hover in the same place, they can only fly in circles. The, the, the mixture between both is a hybrid UAV, and, and that's what we usually propose for such a scenario, because they can take off and land and hover just as a multicopter, but they can switch to, to a fixed wing mode where they have higher speeds and can stay in the air for longer time periods and can carry much higher payloads. But they're just not as agile as a multicopter or not as efficient as a pure fixed wing. Conducting research with UAVs is very challenging. The hardware is expensive and there are so many different models to choose from. And the software stack and the hardware stack is also very complex. So you have to have to, to work hard to know all the software and work with the actual implementation software. And um, to make things even worse, there are many regulatory requirements. I cannot just take a huge big UAV and fly it in the city on our university campus or just give it to some students and, and let them conduct some tests with it. And tests and realistic scenarios are labor intensive. I have to, to go out into the field. I have to deploy the sensor nodes that I want to, to, to talk to. And then I have to refly the same setup over and over again to gather my sensor readings in different configurations. So it takes up time. It takes up human resources and, um, it's not very efficient way to test new network protocols, for example, that are designed for UAVs. And if we look at how 
research is usually done for, for these kind of things. We start with an idea and maybe a mathematical model that we want to simulate and, and see some effects there. But to bring it to the real thing, we, we usually implement it in, in some kind of more realistic software, have an emulated environment where we test this, and then we, we adapt it again and deploy it on some real UAV and some real systems. And then we find out, oh, this doesn't work the way we wanted it to. So we have to go back to the drawing board and account for whatever we encountered in real life that also affects the system. To speed up this process, we designed our testbed, which can merge the second and the third step or bridge the gap to the first step uh, a bit quicker and make it easy to deploy to the real hardware. So we have a fully emulated testbed where we have the, the actual um, ground station software, Q-Ground Control, running in it. We have the, an actual flight controller as software in the loop. And we have a network emulation and we have um, the, the ability to have hardware in the loop setups with software-defined radios to emulate various wireless links. And this uh, enables us to do research on various different levels. So we can work on optimal mission control and mission planning and see how that uh, works on the, on the actual system. We can optimize for resilient network protocols that can be used on the control uh, channel, on, on the MuffLink channel to the UAV itself, but also to the communication for the, for the ground systems for which we can act as a data ferry and collect their data and deliver it uh, via our UAV. And we can conduct research on the flight controller, for example, for hybrid UAVs in a more or less realistic environment. And we can work on reliable network links and modifications to the file layer and see how the actual software, the flight controller and the ground station would react to that. Our testbed is in a portable environment, so it's completely dockerized. We have a Docker Compose setup with uh, different containers in there. We have the actual peaks for flight controller as software in the loop. We use Gazebo as a physical world simulation, and we're building upon the core network emulator for the virtual nodes and the simulated network effects. Here we can see the, the architecture itself of the components. We have a shared directory where we can put files like the mission plan and the setup of the virtual nodes and the experiment description. Then we have the, the ground station as a Docker container where we have Q ground control, but we could also install other software such as Muff Proxy, for example. We have the UAV container running where we have the physical world simulation and the flight controller itself. And these are all connected to the, the core container, which has the, the network emulation and orchestration and movement for the virtual nodes. And optionally, we can have as a hardware in the loop a channel emulator that connects different software-defined radios for simulations on uh, incorporating different wireless technologies. One such setup we can see here where we have three different uh, software-defined radios. We can see on the left screen the ground station and on the right screen the visualization of the file layer properties. And here we speak a MuffLink over a narrowband wireless network um, simulated in our system and are flying a pre-prepared mission here. The communication link between the UAV and the ground station can optionally be realized with real hardware that is sending and receiving signals through a channel emulator. Uh, this is the part in the middle here. The bidirectional channel emulator is implemented completely on the FPGA, enabling large bandwidths and low delay and jitter. In the example scenarios, the transmitter and receiver of those links are implemented with SDRs. The SDR implementations for the communication between the UAV and the ground station is based on Future SDR, a novel software-defined radio framework with support for custom application-specific schedulers and uh, native for accelerators, allowing the use of GPUs and FGPAs 
for signal processing. In our setup, we furthermore benefit from the integrated web API that is used as a configuration interface to change, for example, file parameters live while the system is running. For evaluation purposes, we modeled a few different um, scenarios. For example, here we can see users that are randomly distributed in an area. We have a rough idea where they are and we calculate an optimal trajectory. This is based on an actual MATLAB simulation to connect these and find optimal flight patterns. We then create a flight plan and follow this flight plan with different simulated UAVs. We have a quadcopter here and a hybrid UAV and we can see their actual flight paths and how they connect the different dots. If we zoom in, we can see that depending on the UAV itself, we don't really fly over the actual point. So from a communication perspective, if we have a data fairing scenario, this is quite important, these details, how, how far off you are and how that affects the communication itself. To get a more realistic idea how this looks, uh, we're now going to show a sh short video where you can see sun in action and this scenario modeled with different components and virtual nodes that communicate with each other. We're starting with some MATLAB code where we are calculating the optimal trajectory for our mission where we fly by different users in more or less uncertain locations. We can then export this as a mission plan and import this in QGround control. So we're using the actual UAV control software. This is running all in a simulated environment. Our starting location is at the university campus at the Mission eHub Smart Home House. So now we see uh, here a, a test flight at our campus with one of our actual UAVs and this is how we also test this mission. We can now see how the, the virtual UAV is flying and we have support for integrated hardware in the loop software defined radio to emulate the link between the UAV and the ground station. So when we fly out of communication range, we can see here that we also lose this communication link in our simulated environment. So from now on, the ground station is basically blind. This is running in parallel and is a view of the actual network interface. And we can see here that the UAV is still moving. The green lines indicate new connections. All the smartphones we see here are running decentralized communication app or protocol also used in the Emergent City Reason mission. And we're using delay tolerant networking to distribute messages opportunistically between all these nodes. So the, the actual UAV uh, consisting of a PX4 flight controller as software in the loop running in a physical world simulation on gazebo is still moving and the network connections are simulated here. So once we come in communication range, for example, to person nine here, once we have it discovered as a new peer, we can exchange all our information and exchange the bundles and messages we want to deliver to this person. Everything is running here in real time and the actual ground software that we're simulating is still blind as we're not yet in communication range again. But we can see here the UAV is still moving and communicating with all our virtual nodes. Once we get back into communication range, also the uh, ground station and the ground station software receive updates again and we can also get all the data we've collected from the different virtual smartphones in our mission. So this was a quick overview of Sun, our simulated UAV network testbed. This brings us to our conclusion. What have we presented? We've shown Sun, a fully emulated testbed that's 
for realistic evaluation of research prototypes and can bring down the time to go from a prototype implementation to an actual deployment. We don't need any models. We, we can deploy the real software in our system and easily model more complex missions so we can work interdisciplinary and bring the real tools to our job through software in the loop and hardware in the loop. All this is available open source and um, we hope uh, to see some contributions and some users of this system.